He went and retired on us. By now, you've missed him in the newscasts, but uh, you'll get a good dose of him tonight. Welcome into My State of Mind. I am Dan York. Sean Daly retired after 42 years in the business. He's happy. He's healthy. He'll probably end up teaching. How do I know that? Because I learned it when he was on the program back on Jul January 9th. And I'm not exactly certain what day this is, not because I've had a couple, but because we taped this second show with Sean on January 9th. And I'm either taking a little day off or my tummy hurts or something like that. But you know what happens when we don't have a rundown. It means we have a pre-recorded but an original show. An original certainly uh, is a word for my guest tonight. Here was the headline uh, that WPRI ran. And I think a lot of people probably went, wow, he's too young to have been working for 42 years in the business. But it is true. And before I uh, introduce Sean here on the program, here's a uh, comprehensive wrap that Eyewitness News did on his incredible career. This is Daly's desk, but he's never here. I'm wondering if you can tell us why you're here at the State House. Uh, sorry, no comment. You got to wonder whether he's doing it really to get it done or just to have fun. You look like you're about 12. <laughs> you have the votes to override the governor's veto. And the moments that you've had on TV, they're countless. Come on, man. What are you doing out here at 3 a.m. with a snow yeah. shovel? It's the moments with viewers. Well, thank you. Is the irony lost on anybody in this room that we're discussing fire safety and the sign here says not to exceed 35 people. Chief, tell me what you're thinking you right show now. me the papers. Why are you any different from anybody else who stood in front of a podium and told us stuff that never happened? The question's everything. Are Once you concerned? Again. Because the question gets to the answers. Can we speak with you for a second? Mr. Moreau, are you ashamed of your criminal conduct? I'm seriously, I'm wondering <laughs> if these are the right questions. Some reporters don't listen to the answers. It's an amazing thing, but it's true, isn't it? Why is gasoline not a problem? It is true, and they're making a big mistake. Two cans of gasoline right inside a building. You listen, but then you have to follow it up. They this doesn't look right to me. You would possibly <laughs> die? Well, I thought about the death. Over crackers? Yeah, I, I wasn't thinking about the crackers at the time. What? Speaking of fish. <laughs> don't you dare go to that first story with Don Horner. That is my favorite part about the sea monster. It's got these bangs. When you get sent out in a story like that, you're like, come on, right? Are you kidding me? Like, really? It's like this big. I remember the guy impersonating the sea monster. <laughs> you can't even possibly have a favorite moment. I can't even, a favorite? I can't even remember them all. This is exciting. What, walking with you? <laughs> It's actually with former Governor Bruce Sondland. Go back to our history, Sean. Takes his arm around me. Sean, let me tell you about American history here. Our charter said the political power shall rest in the people. And he's just like, he's just in the moment. Now, so come this on. is about that? We're all the way back to the beginning, this right? This is about that. And he wanted to get truth to me. And he knew that through me, he could get truth to the viewers. Did you see that? Sean Daly is correct again. I can't resist this. The two of you in the same <laughs> frame. They probably think maybe you are part commentator sometimes. I mean, it is so loud. Guilty. Hey, buddy. Did you see the crosswalk? Let the viewer know that I'm right there with you. But you're thinking this is nuts. Hey, hey! I'm thinking it's nuts too. You're known for these tags. There are dum-dums and then there are dum-dums. How do you tag the Sean Daly story? <sighs> you had to ask that, didn't you? The veteran of 42 years finally decided to just give us a statement which reads, a TV reporter's world. It's a mile wide and an inch deep. Until we meet again, Sean Daly, Eyewitness News. A mile, a mile wide and an inch deep. Explain. The mile wide is my, is the emphasis there. That goes all the way back to the early days of my career at NBC News in Washington. And I was told and have since learned that it was right You'll love this career because you get to know a little bit about everything. 
And that's the part I was really trying to get to with that. But the expression is, yes, a mile wide and an inch deep. It means we flit around, as talk radio guys do too, right? Mm. Congratulations on a great career. Thank you. You're retiring after 42 years. Let's get it out of the way. Why? Well, you say let's get out of the way. I think one of the subtexts that we should get out of the way right away is did he jump or was he pushed? Because mm -hmm. let's just face it, that's what people think in these public uh, departures. They always want to know that. So I'm just going to say it straight up. I jumped. I was not pushed. I, there was time left on it's my contract. It's certainly a question that you would have asked somebody else in the public eye. It right? is, and it's a fair question to ask me. You know, it's a two-way street there on that point. I'm jumping because I've had enough. I think, I almost also think I might have, I might, might, not sure about this, possibly have worn out my welcome. I don't know how much more of uh, uh, any one person, anybody can take. Eventually, the audience might just want somebody else. I don't know that. I really, that's secondary or tertiary actually, but primary is my own sense of do I still have the same drive now, it's easy to talk about it here, and I have all the energy in the world, but out there every day on Blackstone, Massachusetts, really? I have to spend a week on that? No. Th that just gets really hard. Yeah, we and, talked and, about and that in the last show where, where you, you, you were, things were weighing on you uh, significantly. But, you know, Walt uh, presented something in that terrific piece that... Uh, did Johnny put that together? Johnny put that together. Yeah. Johnny Valella. Johnny Shout Vallella. out to Johnny. He's, he's amazing. Um, but he talks about the commentator part, and you said guilty. And so when you say, I wonder if somebody is tired of me watching television, you ran a fine line in your news reporting between it being about the story. The story always got told, but your signature on the story was always present. Talk to me about that. Well, you're right, first of all, and that was by design. I, 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 there were two goals every day. Accurate, always, but memorable. And I don't think there's any sin in trying to be memorable. We're talking about it, aren't we? So it, it had to have worked to some extent. And when I just said, as I did, that possibly uh, you could wear out your welcome, it's simply that, possibly. I don't know. That wasn't the driver. It, but it's in the whole larger Well, range. I can tell you, I've from got, my perspective, that's not it. Right, and I haven't I mean, heard that it, from anybody. That's only in my own head. Mm. Can anybody take another chase down a staircase, or should I let this chase go? That kind of thing. When you see the next guy headed for a staircase, do you want to get in the elevator and meet him at the bottom so that you have a little extra access and you don't have to do that borderline ridiculous chase down a staircase? Or do you just go do another chase down the staircase? Mm. A man can wonder. Does it all kind of run together for you sometimes? Well, not the ones that would involve the state house and involve public corruption or public misconduct. Those do not blur. The ones that blur, sadly, are the ones that are equally important, by the way. People say, well, why, well, why so much crime? Why do you cover crime? Why does television obsess on crime? Look, the day we don't cover crime, we're on the road to anarchy. Crime coverage is important because when somebody got murdered, if we don't cover, if if we can all of a sudden kill people, people can start killing everybody and television or the, the newspaper or talk radio doesn't care, that's a much bigger problem than overkill on crime. I'm not a huge fan of crime, of crime coverage, but I'm not a critic of it either. It needs to be in the broadcast because it's a, to me it goes to, it goes to a lot of different things, but it goes to the distribution of wealth, it goes to education. Why are our schools not producing people smart enough not to make these ridiculous decisions and to do these easily uh, solvable crimes. I mean, some of these crimes, they get caught 20 minutes later. I think no matter how pedestrian the story, forgive me, Lord, for even suggesting a homicide is a pedestrian news story, think about how sadly I, I perverted that even that thought even is, but you know what I mean. I do. Where a SIG out, meaning a signature out from a reporter, might be just matter of fact, lost life, you know, Joe Smith, Eyewitness News, you always found a way, some way, to punctuate it, to give it some meaning. That was important to you. It was, and I actually have had 
viewers through the years come and thank me for that. You honored, I had one woman tell me, Sean, and I won't even try to imitate it because it would just be horrible, but I covered her third son's murder. She said, and you cover the other two also. So one guy covers three murders of children of the same woman. How does that happen? How, did, how do you shake that? I'm not sure I have shaken that. I'm not sure the goal is to shake that. I was blown away by that when she told me that. And then she, of course, welcomed me in, and she had liked the coverage of the previous two sons who were killed, and near now I'm covering the murder of her third son. So I mean, just, just try to get your heads around that, I everybody. Can't, I can't even do it. Uh, but thankfully, we've got a lot more time with Sean here tonight. Stay with us. Hey, you say things that nobody's willing to say to people. What do you mean by that? Let's talk you're about just, that. You're bold, and I like the way you just come and let people know about themselves. You just always do. Everybody knows that about Sean Daly. Let when people it, know about them. Go ahead, you when go. When somebody's something serious going on, you're like, they should send Sean, because Sean's not afraid to say anything to anyone. Can't make that up. What do you think when you hear that? I'm really happy when I when I hear that. That, that she, I lived off that for a couple of weeks afterward. I was so jacked up that that, because we're talking to a piece of glass every day, and you're talking to a microphone in your radio show, and here you've got another piece of glass, right? How do you really? Well, you have callers, so callers are the equivalent, right? We don't have callers. I'm, a, you know, I was lonely. You know, you sort of get lonely. You're not sure it's working. You think it is. You hope it is. Your bosses say you're okay. You know, your friends say, but what would your friends say? I mean, they would not like, until you're jumping off the bridge, your friends aren't going to. So to get it from a real person with no connection to you at all, and to get a lot of those, not just, I mean, that one's on tape. That's a somewhat regular occurrence. So I, I ultimately learned that it was working. But I can honestly tell you, I'm not being disingenuous. I wasn't sure. About the first half of my career, I wasn't sure. Why? No reaction, no feedback, not enough. I mean, not, you just, again, it's, it's a one-way street. How does it have to become a more feedback fertile environment? I, well, in part, the, the landscape changed, the technological landscape changed. Twitter's one way, Facebook is another, and uh, maybe just longevity and people were more free. Like, now I'm, I guess I'm part of this whole Rhode, Rhode Island thing, whatever it is, and people are, uh, feeling free to say what they think and some of it got captured on tape most of it actually doesn't get captured on tape because you're not in the middle I mean I was just in the neighborhood there and she just started talking so speaking of captured on tape tell me about you're probably going to end up teaching we talked about that in the last show uh, which I think will be a phenomenal experience for students uh, the, the the enrichment that you can provide them in both your expertise uh, your way of doing business and just your engagement, I'm thinking you'll, you'll be a very popular class and kids will be trying to get written into them, so especially on a collegiate level. But talk to me about what you're going to do teaching them about how much a reporter should be in a story. You know, back in the day, whatever day that was, we're both old enough to know what the day was at least, reporters stayed out of stories. And you have made your interrogation a part of so many stories. Uh, talk to me about that. Well, you're on the right track here. It was about a third of the way. I've, I've had a chance to think about this a little bit because it's come up uh, before, and, I, and I'm kind of wondering it myself. I've since analyzed it m more or less accurately. I'm not sure it's exactly a third, but about a third of the way into my career, a news director once berated me correctly, as I, as I uh, learned, for doing a neutral version of cemetery vandalism, okay? He's like, where's the other side to that? There's no other side to that. When kids go knock over headstones of the deceased, you're allowed to be angry, is what he told me. He said, the viewers want you to be angry, that you owe it to the viewer to come at that story with attitude. So I thought to myself, hmm, I think I need to think about this. I think I think you might be onto something broader than cemetery stories. There are times where you can come to a story with attitude, as long as it's justified. To me, one of the mantras, I have a lot of mantras, but one of them is just because you have the right to do it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do, right? We all have that. That, that should be anybody's mantra, not just in television news, but in life. 
always be kind if you can, right? And just because you have the right to do it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Think about it. But if it is the right thing to do, to whack somebody, even if it's somebody in the abstract over the cemetery vandalism, or if it's somebody not in the abstract over <laughs> corruption yeah. or over well, well, a that, felony that, that, conviction, that's the thing that I think, then it's okay. I, and I agree with you. I, th I, think, I think the old school that the reporter should never be seen or engaged in a story was way, way, way wrong on the pendulum side. Too much theater from a reporter is another, another thing. But there's a cut that we ran at the top of the show where you're in this official meeting. Joe Trillo was there and a whole bunch of others. It's a fire meeting back when post uh, station nightclub fire that we had this incredible surge of regulation, over-regulation in my judgment. But you caught the irony of a 35-person capacity in a room that was filled by many more than that. And you asking the question in the story, I think, is wholly appropriate because that is the essence of the story. And the question and the answer in its totality should be heard, right? Or and seen. Absolutely. The facial <laughs> expressions, as they're all like, oh, Christmas. Is, We're getting is, busted, is what the yeah, face has said. Priceless and newsworthy. Thank you. But here's the other, here's the backstory to that. And I'm, I'm glad you opened that, that door. I had to think about that. That took five or 10 minutes before I did summon the courage. Now, you maybe think I'm, uh, Sean Daly summoning the courage. I thought he wakes up with courage. Not really. I wanted to be sure that that was right. That they weren't going to that that it wasn't going to be too far the other way on the pendulum. Right. I really I did. I gave that five to ten minutes. My camera guy didn't even know. And then I finally said, let me get a lav. And I made sure I had a microphone too, because sometimes the microphone is only over on the table, and no sense in going through all that and getting beat up. And if it's not even good television, or if the viewer can't even hear what you're saying, that doesn't work, right? So I made sure I had a microphone, but it was after the thought that, no, this, this is justified. This is the station nightclub fire, folks. These people are out of their minds to be having this hearing in this room. All they needed to do was find some larger room, and this is my job, absolutely. I had the debate with myself. There's no time to get on the cell phone or call an editor or call anybody. This was Sean against Sean, and I had a lot of those moments. Before you see it on camera, believe me, I've already thought it out most of the time. Now, you can't know. The ball takes funny bounces. You know that. So you never really know where this is going. But that one worked. We'll be right back. So look, you know, you, you think you're going to teach, um, which I think would be a phenomenal choice, but you don't know really what you're going to do. You made a decision to retire, more or less. It's almost, I wouldn't call it gumpish, but you just stopped running. Right? You just decided, I don't feel like running anymore, more or less, if I understand it correctly. You understand it correctly. And I thought that I, I'm luckily, I've been at it long enough and I'm uh, uh, comfortable enough with Rhode Island and with my place here that I have some time to let something bubble up. And I thought it'll bubble up more accurately and more truthfully if it's not mixed in with all of the day to day. I actually tried for about the last year, two, three, maybe even, to come up with a plan and talk to a bunch of people and but in day-to-day -day journalism, there really isn't that much time to get out of your own Well, listen, you've, you've, you've world. Had, uh, people don't know that you've had a very successful family life as well. Your wife is uh, she's a professional working at Brown University, right, in, yes. in, in development? Yes. So she's not home every day, right? No, neither of us Good. is, did and you, our three did, children are grown. Because you drive her crazy. Oh, I would drive her did, crazy. There's no possible way with that brain and the way it moves that anyone could sit. You're, you are wonderful. But in doses, daily dose. <laughs> I couldn't but you've resist. Done good. Sorry. You've, sent, you've raised three kids. They're on and they're off to college. Uh, they've been past college. They've no boomerangs. No boomerangs. Three college graduates. Right. It's a uh, that's a good thing. So you've done well, but you've got a lot to do left. And I wonder when you you look back on this, and as you're looking back on this, you'll be teaching people about what to do getting into this business. When you are teaching, what are you going to tell? young aspiring journalists what the most important thing is about what they're choosing to do for a career read a lot because when the moment comes you better be ready and there won't be teleprompter and there won't be notes and you won't be able to get on your cell phone and ask somebody what to ask or what to say you better just know and you better know how it fits into the larger context 
because most of these stories, they're not isolated. They fit into a larger pattern. And generally, if I've had any success, it's been knowing that this is not an isolated incident. But I wonder, I wonder, and maybe uh, if- But I don't think people read enough. They, haven't, they don't read enough. Sean? They don't converse enough. There's that Young too. Young people don't talk to each other. You mentioned in our last show how we look at each other eye to eye. Young people, you've seen them in your own newsroom, any newsroom, any business, any office in America. They don't do that anymore. And one of the skills that you brought to the table, which is almost instinctive and inherent, was the ability to look somebody in the eye and talk with them and converse and report conversantly. I hope you can teach them how to do that. I hope you get them off their phones. They've got to get off the phones. These phones are death. They're now, I think, afraid of conversation. And conversation, to me, in the hierarchy, it's face-to-face, -face, right? Next is telephone. I actually have thought, and I've thought some, to some extent about this, if the devices had been invented in reverse order, people would think, oh my gosh, the phone is the coolest thing. I can hear tone of voice. I can tell if she really loves me. I, I can, oh, there's so much more information. This texting stuff, those are just words. Anybody could write anything. By the way. But because texting is new, Right? We're obsessed with newness, aren't we? I'm so short on time. Have you thought of theater? <laughs> I'm serious. Two different people have said you could do theater, but I don't think they're right. But they have said that. Well, I just, I, I, I want you to think about it and report back to me. <laughs> Congratulations on a, on a terrific career. Thank you, Dan. You'll be around, right? I will be, and I'll be listening to you on the radio. All right. Sean Daly, 42 years of doing it only his way. Sean Daly, Eyewitness News. We'll be right back. Your thoughts on Sean Daly or anything else that we do here, always, we like to hear them. 228-1886, email, Facebook post, tweet at us, do as you shall please. But your interaction is oh so vital. We'll be back with another show the next day, the next working day. We'll miss Sean, but he'll be around.